What's going on internet? IG here again today and I'm talking about a video I should have made a long time ago and that's simply the best free applications ever. The inspiration of this video came from the fact that uh, as a guy who is technically inclined, I'm often setting up people's computers, whether they be Macs or Ubuntu or, or normal Windows PCs. And there's just always that go-to list of free software that I almost always install on nearly every PC, including my own. So I'm gonna be running through that list today. And I'm also gonna be doing some honorable mentions of some other free programs and services that I do use that pretty much come stock standard now on pretty much any machine that I touch. Number one, we have a web browser and that of course would be Chromium or Google Chrome depending on whether you like sending your usage stats and or crash reports to Google. Very nice browser based on WebKit, I'm sure most of the internet is using it now. So it's really enough said. Obviously an honorable mention goes to Firefox but with its add-ons and extensions, but obviously it is a bit sluggish nowadays. Number two, email client and contact manager sort of suite and that would be Thunderbird. Thunderbird is a fantastic cross-platform email client. It has a lot of extensions and plugins that you can uh, enable Google Calendar support, Google Contact support, Google Tasks, uh, and for, for what I use, it's perfect. It handles pretty much every email service under the sun, so you really can't go wrong. Number three, Pigeon. Very nice universal chat client. Connects with pretty much every chat service out there. Enough said. Number four, GIMP. Of course, the GNU image manipulation program is one of the flagship open source applications that are available on the web today. And like I said, it's available across every platform you can think of, on the computer side anyway, and it's a fantastic raster-based image manipulator. Often compared to Photoshop, you can watch a full review of it here. Number five, Handbrake. Excellent DVD ripper and video converter. Again, available on all of those platforms. Fantastic for ripping uh, encrypted DVDs. Especially if you're on the Linux side of things, it's a bit easier than on the others, but it's still, it works across all of those platforms and it also, you can also use it to convert videos to popular MP4 based formats for Android phones, iPhones, Apple TVs, you name it. Again, full review for that one right here. Number six, VLC. Really, what can I say? It's a universal video player. It plays every media file format under the sun. A fantastic application and definitely worth checking out and I'm sure most of you know what it is already. But if you don't have the little road cone running on your system, then you are making a big mistake. Go and download it now. Again, the links to all of these programs will be in the description box below the like button. And of course, you're gonna need something to manage all your downloads. And for that, I choose Qubit Torrent as it is available on every single platform out there. And it's fantastic for downloading your Linux distros, uh, any large installer files and or other things, which I will leave up to the discretion of the viewer. Number eight, we have a music manager, Clementine. Again, cross-platform playlist oriented and very nice crossfading as well as background streaming services through things like Google Drive, GrooveShark, Gemendo, any of those other cloud services out there. Fantastic music program and it has multimedia plugin keys for nearly every platform and laptop out there. It can manage a large amount of music. I have about a 30 gig music library and it manages it perfectly. Coming in at number nine, an Office Suite, LibreOffice. It's the more recently developed version of the previous open source flagship Office Suite known as OpenOffice, but LibreOffice has since taken a direction of its own and is being developed much faster and being improved and fixed along the way. And uh, the recent 4.0 release is fantastic. So if you don't have it and you need an Office Suite, download it, it will cover most of your needs. It's comparable to really Office 2003 as far as user interface goes, but with the recent developments, we should see some improvements in the, U in the UI. Having said that, it's still very functional and it works cross-platform, cross-compatibility across pretty much every major Office suite out there. Go and download it. And finally, coming in at number 10, we have Audacity, the audio editor. Again, fantastic audio editing tool. I've used this tool pretty much ever since I discovered it, probably uh, close to 10 years ago now. It's been developed a long time. It's a very mature program. It has very fine-tuned editing features in it that you can use to touch up any audio file format under the sun. An honorable mention does go to XBMC, the Xbox Media Center. Uh, again, cross-platform, fantastic media center that you can use to plug into your TV anytime you have your laptop around to, you know, enjoy your pictures or your music, your movies, whatever. And if you want to see a review to that, you can check here. And also now I'm do I do want to mention the free services that you can install on any platform, whether they be Ubuntu, Windows, or Mac. And those would be Evernote with clients for all of those available, including the Linux 
remix version, our Everpad review available here. Spotify, music streaming service, very essential if you're a music lover. Pretty much unlimited streaming with some ads and again, clients available on every platform. Again, it is gonna depend on what country you're in, so keep that in mind. And finally, Skype. We can't really get away from it because it's really just such a good service. Even though it was taken over by Microsoft, they are still developing clients on all three of those major platforms, so I really can't complain. So that's it guys, those are my top 10 best open source applications ever. And of course some shout outs to the most popular free services and software that I use that aren't quite open source, but hey, they're still free. Let me know what your favorite open source applications are of all time in the comments below. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. And I will be back in the very next week with the OpenSUSE review as OpenSUSE drops in a few days from the time this video was recorded. Thank you all for watching and I shall catch you all again next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.